Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade and welcome back. Let's jump right into what the JSON file looks like. I'm using JSON Editor Online, it's free. It allows you to edit JSON files both directly with text, as you can see over here, and also with this sort of more formalized structure over here. This is how I initially built uh, the JSON file that we'll be using today. And I just copy and pasted it in over here and then hit the copy button right here so that these two sides have the same thing. So how is our data structure? Well, there's more than one way, but I think this is a pretty good one. We have a top level object, which is what we will save to a variable when we import it into GameMaker Studio. This top level object has pages or what I'm calling pages. These pages are also objects. You can see that they have names. These are just gonna be the names of the pages that I've chosen. And the page, again, you can tell that a page is an object by the curly brackets, has two types of data in it. Number one, it has the page text. And number two, it has a list of options. These are a list in GameMaker terms and an array in JSON terms. We can look at the options. The options are themselves objects in JSON terms, maps in GameMaker terms. And these maps have two things in them. They have their text and then the name of the page that they go to. So here we can see that first left will go to this page. We can go look at another page, look around. This one has two options. We can go look at one of these options, go to page, leave. And we can see that that is also a page. If we go to leave, we can see that this page has no options. The nice thing about working with the JSON editor is that you can do things like this, where you say, Duplicate. So now we would have another page and we could change the name of the page. We can go and change the page text. And then when everything is done, we could hit this button. It would turn it all into a text file and then we can just save out this text file. I don't want this though, so I'm going to remove it. So here we go. Here's our object. You can see it over here. You could type it out this way as well, but the larger your JSON files get, the harder I think that this is to keep track of but it is very good to get into the habit of being able to write out your JSON files like this as well. Note that JSON Editor Online can also turn a file into a single line of text, no breaks, which can be useful if you don't wanna use a special script to import it into GameMaker Studio. So that's our JSON file. We have a top level object with other objects. These will be the pages and then each page has its text and its list of options or array of options in JSON terms. And each option is itself an object which has its text and the page that it is linked to. So if I bring my completed project over here, we can start and you can see that we have the text of a page. You enter a small room with two doors and the options where the text of the option, go left is right here and go right is right there. We don't need to display what page these options will take us to because of course the program does that automatically. All right, let's switch back over to GameMaker Studio and implement this. So the first thing that we're going to do is create another group. We'll call it the book. We'll create a book manager. In our book manager, all we need is a create event. We can import our JSON file very simply with our custom import function. We'll just say the book equals import JSON and then the name of the file, which I've called cyoa underscore JSON dot txt. This file is the JSON file that we were looked at, saved out as a TXT, and put into the same folder that we used in the importing JSON tutorial. Now what we would like to be able to say is something like, go to page and then give a page name. So let's just write that. So we can just write, go to page, start. Start is the name of the starting page in our book. Of course, this function doesn't exist yet, but now we can just go write this function. Go to page equals function page name. Now remember that our page has two parts. The first part was the text, so we'll want to create the text. The second part was the options, so we'll want to create the options. To display the text, I'm just going to create an object called object text box, which I haven't created yet. And then I'm simply gonna have it draw a variable, which I'll call my text to the screen. So the next thing that we need to do is actually get the text from this page so that we can assign it to the variable and have it drawn to the screen. And we can do that very easily with saying my text equals other dot the book because we are inside of a with statement. We have to use the keyword other to reference this book manager. And then we can chain together our accessors so we know the name of the page, which is a map. So we can access the page 
by using a key because again remember that the book is a map so we can use the map accessor along with the page name to pull up that map and then we can go into that map and use another accessor along with the next key page text to get a copy of the text and if I pull up our JSON document here you can see that if we were to pass in start and then page text we would get this text right here so that's how we'll create the text on the screen and obviously right now we have an error because we haven't created this text box yet so let's do that quickly so we can just create the text box we'll leave a blank for now and now we don't have an error so the next thing we need to do is create our options now we need to be able to click on our options so we're going to make them a button and we're going to display the text of the button where the text is the text of that option and then we'll simply write a function for the button that calls go to page with the number of the page that we assign to it remember that our option is a list so we can loop through all of the available options inside of the option list with the for loop where we can say i equals zero i is less than the list size and then again we can chain our accessors to get the page that we're on and then the list is held under page options and then plus equals one and i'm going to make our text just a little bit smaller i'm sorry but i want to be able to see it all at once and then much like with the text box we can simply create an option button which again i haven't done that yet but we'll make those next and assign the two values that we want so the text that it's going to display and the button that it's going to go to inside of a with statement so we can say with instance create layer room width divided by two and room height divided by two plus i times 80 layer object option button and let me explain this part right here so i've already experimented with the position that these should be created at actually i forgot to mention up here 40 and 80 is going to be the position of the text box and there's nothing special about these numbers I just came up with them by experimenting a little bit. They work for this size room in this project. You might have to find your own. For the options, we're gonna create it at room width divided by two, so in the center of the room, because our buttons are centered. And then room height divided by two, so that's halfway down the room, plus I times 80. You might be very familiar with this type of thing, uh, but if you're not, since we're going through a for loop, we can say the iteration we're on times 80 which to start with will be zero times 80, so that'll be zero. So the first button will be spawned directly in the middle of the room. But the next time we go through and spawn another button, I will be one, so that'll be I times 80. So that'll be room height divided by two, center of the room, plus 80 more pixels. Putting the second button down, and if we had a third or a fourth, which we don't, I just limited it to two buttons. But if we had more buttons, they would spawn going down. And then of course, layer object option button. And now we can say my text equals other dot the book because again just like before we're inside a with statement page name page options the position in the list that we're at notice we're using the list accessor so it's not an array and then option text we can duplicate that line and do the exact same thing for the my page variable but set it to be option page and i see now that i forgot a bracket up here if we do that there we go everything is fixed and if we switch back over to json editor online we can see that we'll be looping through this array right here which is a list in game maker and we'll be going into the object which is a map and we'll be getting option text which will go as the text of the button and option page which is the page that that button will go to when it is clicked if you're not used to chaining accessors like this it can be a little bit confusing to look at but it's a great practice to get in the habit of and so if you're unfamiliar i would say look at the text file and just follow these accessors into it until you can do this easily and that's almost it the only other thing that we actually need to do and i admit that this is a little bit cheating because i know that we need to do it but it might not actually be immediately obvious but if we're going to be creating a bunch of pages in the same room before we create any pages we'll need to destroy any existing pages so we can just come up here say destroy existing pages instance destroy object text box instance destroy object option button so if any instances of these objects exist this will destroy it and then we'll create a page obviously the first page that we create this will have no effect because they don't exist but after the first page it will destroy any existing page because remember that a page our go to page function 
is created from these two instances. It's created from the text box and then the various option buttons. So now let's make the option button and then code that. So we make object option button. Now we're gonna give this button the large sprite mask. Since we're creating in code, we don't need to resize it and make it a child of button parent. And then all we need to do is inherit the create event, give it the my page variable, which we can default to an empty string, and then rewrite its activate button function. And this is very straightforward. We just wanna say with our book manager, go to page other dot my page. Remember that go to page is a function in the book manager. So we need to be inside the book manager scope in order to use it. And then because we've switched the scope to the book manager, we need to use the other keyword to reference the my page variable of this button. And that's it for the button. Our text box is equally simple. We're just going to initialize the variable my text to be a blank string. And then we need a draw event. And I'm going to copy the code over so you don't have to watch me type it all out. We're simply going to set a couple variables, the font, the H align and V align, the color, tell it to draw it X and Y, my text, and then 40 and 320. I figured these numbers out uh, through a little bit of experimentation. If this were a real project, you probably wouldn't want to just hard code the numbers like this. You'd want to come up with some variables and a way to figure out those variables and set those variables. But for this simple project, I think it was good enough to simply pick some numbers and use those. And that should be everything actually. Let's run it and see if I got it all right. I ran it and it did not work because I forgot one very important thing. Obviously we need to actually put our book manager into the room. All right, I'll try it again. All right, I caught one more error. I forgot that we need to change our default font on the buttons to be small. Since it's inheriting from button parent, and the default font is FNT large. That would not look so good. We need to set it to be small. But this I think actually is the last mistake I need to fix. And now I'll run it one more time. So here we go. We can click on start. We can click on back, go between the two. And now our buttons exist with our options. We can go left. We find nothing but a dead end. We can go back. We can go right. We can open the chest. We can give up. And that's an immediate game over. We can go back, we can just start over, go right, open the chest, look around, pull the lever. We did it. Obviously, this is just a little bit of a demo, but you could have as many pages as you want here. They could say whatever you want and so on. So there you go. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know down below. And that's it. Thanks for watching.